now since I took my job as Indian agent. Bouncing along in the stage to San Francisco, I was thinking of the old saw about the battle lost because of the horseshoe mail. Everything Cochise and I had built together during the past year now depended on blue denim pants. stage in San Francisco 10 days and nine nights out of Tucson. The 10 days I'd forget sometime. The nine nights I'd remember the rest of my life. Could you direct me to Brooks Melodian, please? Brooks Melodian? Are you sure that's where you want to go? Barbara Coast. Straight down Kearney to Pacific, turn right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Be sure and hold on to what? They'll spit out bones in the morning. Where are you going? Eureka Boarding House. It's, uh, it's on Commercial Street. Didn't you come in and clay? You go straight down Montgomery for five blocks. Wait it's... a minute. I'm from Arizona. Oh. Which way and how far to fast loaf? Oh. Straight north. Ten minutes. Thanks. <laughs> My dear girl, I appreciate your generous offer. There's but... nothing generous about it. Everybody pays by the week, don't you see? But after all, Miss Weaver, I am not everybody. Look, it'll be easier for you and easier for me if you don't pay your room and board every day. On Saturdays, you can bring the money in one lump, just like the other. I want to settle this here and now. Yes, sir? What kind of a place do you run here? And what do you mean by that? Well, I'm looking for a room. I'm sorry we're filled up. I don't have a single room in the... Turn around. Tom. Oh, Tom. How could you do this to me? Why didn't you write and tell me? Surprise, surprise. Mm. Oh, think of all the fun and worry I'd have had counting the days. You look wonderful. You don't look so bad yourself. Well, that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. What happened? Get hit in the head by a bolt of lightning? Came over me all of a sudden. Just couldn't live without you another minute. Mm. If you think that through a couple of times, you'd realize what a sensible idea that is. Now, sir. Now what? Suppose you tell me the real reason you're here. 1,440 pairs of pants. I beg your pardon? For the Chiricahuas. When you send a letter and it doesn't work, then you send a telegram. When that doesn't work, well, then you hop on a stage. I'm losing rank. Now, Carrie. Mm. Second fiddle to a pair of pants. Well, 1,440 is a lot of pants. I suppose that's a comfort. Excuse me, sir. I couldn't help overhearing. Did I understand you to say that Chiricahua Indians stand in need of clothing? That's right. Uh, Tom, may I present? In its proper time, young lady. You would do me an honor, sir, by sharing my room with me until yours is ready. Well, I... No uh... inconvenience. We'll be quite comfortable. I, I couldn't let you do that, really. It's all settled. I'll enjoy the company, and we can discuss the pants problem. After you, sir. The tide of civilization is sweeping westward. Homesteaders are bringing their women folk into the vast reaches of their glorious country, hitherto known only to the red man. Mm -hmm. It's high time somebody put pants on the Apaches. Some people figure the Apaches don't even need pants, or anything else for that matter. Oh, you mustn't lose hope, Mr. Jeffords. Moments of dark despair are the fate of the man with ideas. What's that? My newest project. A bridge across San Francisco Bay. Well... The day is coming when a great city will rise on the eastern shore, and people must be able to cross over, dry shod. You, uh, 
specialize in bridges, Mr. Norton? Oh, no. This is only one of many projects. Mm. What's this? The Farallon Extension runs out to the Farallon Islands, 23 miles offshore. Mm. What for? Mm. Sightseers, fishermen, bird's egg collectors. I see. Come in. I brought some towels, Your Majesty. Well, thank you. I'm sure we'll be quite comfortable. Mr. Jeffords, I shall take up the Apache pants problem with the highest authority. You may count on me, sir. I shall leave no stone unturned. Thank you. Miss Weaver? Your Majesty. I tried to warn you. You've been talking with Norton I, Emperor of all the Americas. Who? He's a dear old man. Everybody loves him. After he lost all his money about 15 years ago, he suddenly announced that he was Emperor of the Americas. Lost his reason when he lost his money, huh? No. No, he has some strange ideas, but sometimes some of them make sense. Uh-uh. You're among gentlemen now. You don't pack one of these around San Francisco. South of Clay Street, we're law-abiding citizens. You know, you were made for a white shirt and a black tie. There must be a vacant office somewhere just waiting for a young attorney to move in and hang out his shingle. I haven't practiced law since I left New York. The Indians keep me busy enough. I wish... I wish there were no Chiricahua and no Cochise. And that you'd never known that Apache girl. Don't wish that. I can't help it. Don't even say it, then. All right. I'll just wish you were all mine. Is that all right? Mm-hmm. While you're at it, wish me up an even ten gross of blue denim pants. Fourteen hundred forty pairs of blue denim pants. Right. Funny, I don't recall a thing about an order from the Chiricahua Agency for denim pants. Are you sure? Mr. Wilkins, I sent that order in in March. This is September. You've had three letters and one telegram. And you're sure the pants didn't arrive? What do you think? I beg your pardon? Would I have spent ten days and nine nights to get here if I wasn't sure they never got to Tucson? Well, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Jeffords. I'll put a tracer through. How long will that take? Several weeks. Forget it. Where's the deputy commissioner? I'd like to speak to him. Oh, I'm afraid that's impossible. The, the secretary of the interior is in town on an official visit. The commissioner's canceled all his appointments. Who else can I see? Well, there's our superintendent, Mr. Chenoweth. He'll do. According to our inventory records, Mr. Jeffords, you've had your clothing quota for the fiscal year. Well, they're wrong. But how could that be? Somebody's made a mistake. I haven't received so much as a bandana handkerchief since I took over the agency. Well, all I can do is to have the clerk put a tracer through. Mr. Chenoweth, I can't dress 600 Chiricahuas in tracers. Well, what do you suggest? I have to have that clothing before the cold weather hits next month or they'll find their own way of getting it. What do you mean? We haven't had a Chiricahua raid in a year. But if they don't get supplies, nobody's going to keep them on the reservation. Cochise is having trouble with some of his hot-headed braves now. I see. What do you want me to do? Issue a new requisition. I'll ride back with the shipment horse freight. Well, I'm afraid for that I'd need authority from the deputy commissioner. Well, get it. Are you giving this office orders, Mr. Jeffords? If you like, I'll get down on my haunches and burn prayer sticks. I'll do anything to get those pants. They're that important. Ah, uh, Mr. Jeffords. <laughs> what is it, Wilkins? Signed requisition, purchase order, Request for voucher, shipping order, way bill. You like to see it? Received in good condition.
freight depot, Tucson, Arizona Territory, 1,440 pairs blue denim pants. Well, is that your signature? Certainly looks like it. Well, according to this, your shipment reached Tucson over a month ago. Well, all of these have the same signature. I think you'd better do a little checking at your end of the line, Mr. Jeffords. Maybe I'd better. When's the next stage to Tucson? They leave twice a week. Next one's two days from now. Well, if you learn anything before I leave, you can reach me at the Eureka. You Jeffords, I'm as puzzled by all this as you are. Why don't we talk about it some more tonight? Uh, I'm dining rather late at the Oyster House. Will you join me? Thanks anyway. Tied up with an old friend. You think they uh, got off the freight wagon somewhere along the way and marched in formation over the horizon? It's about as logical as somebody forging my signature and selling them. Could show up all over town. Yeah, as you said, 1,440 is a lot of pants. You know something? Hmm. If you were a practicing attorney, you could serve some papers on them. We could use some Arizona attorneys around here. That's what you said. Maybe if I say it a few more times, it'll sink in. Do you really want me to quit? You can't win, Tom, because nobody wants you to win. Nobody but you and Cochise. You didn't answer my question. Do you want me to quit? Thomas Jeffords, we are going back to the Eureka, and I am going to put on my best party dress, and we are going to have the very best dinner San Francisco can produce. Right. And um, as a dear old friend, I implore you to make no further mention of your doggone 1,440 pairs of blue denim pants. Yes, ma'am. Uh, miss. Miss. That's your the Chiricahua Apache Indians are the responsibility of this government and are at this moment pantsless. Well, how about that word pantsless, Mr. Jeffords? I'd make it without pants. Very good. At this moment, without pants, I do hereby order that the funds from the Imperial Treasury be forthwith appropriated to procure 10 gross blue denim breeches for said Chiricahua Apaches, and that same be dispatched to them without delay. Norton first, Emperor. How's that? Fine. Think it'll do any good? An imperial proclamation, Mr. Jeffords, makes compliance mandatory. I see. I do not like to resort to a proclamation ever. The people should make these decisions of their own free will. This, however, is an emergency. U.S. Cavalry? Where do you procure your Imperial uniforms? What? This blouse, it's government issue. Naturally, it's government issue. I am the government. Well, where did you get it? I requisitioned it from my Imperial shop, where I get everything. What's the name of your imperial shop, Your Majesty? Carmody's. Carmody's. I do for you. You uh, carry an unusual stock for a tailor shop. Well, the more things I've got to sell, the more money I can make. Joshua Norton sent me here. Oh, the emperor. What do you want? 
Blue denims. What size? All sizes. I want a thousand pair. What for? Got a contract. Railroad? What makes you ask that? Well, I don't know who else could use a thousand pair of work pants. Can you get them? Say, what's your name? How can I get hold of you? Why did I just come back tomorrow? Good night. Uh, mister. You know, this is going to run up around $1,200. That is, if I can get them. Good enough. See you tomorrow. Mr. Wilkins. Yes, sir, from the Indian office. I've just come from the Eureka. I've been trying to find you. Say, <laughs> I'm afraid I owe you an apology. What do you mean? I just couldn't help thinking this afternoon how impossible it was. You're coming all the way to San Francisco to get that merchandise with your signature on the way bill all the time. Step in, won't you? Confession's good for the soul, Wilkins. I went through all the records this afternoon. I found a lot of things. Good for you. Some of them just didn't make sense. Just don't know what's been happening, but... Well, someone's been making some rather serious mistakes. I think I found your pants. It's quite a coincidence. I figured I just found them myself. Where'd you make your strike? A warehouse on Brennan Street. I have the key. I may not be there tomorrow, the corn I yelled for all last winter. Ended up by buying it out of my own pocket. I suppose some other agent signed a receipt for two dozen X handles. Got that way, Bill, in your files? What do you happen to know about this warehouse, Wilkins? This place shows as an auxiliary storage facility on the books. According to the inventory, there's nothing here at all. Do you think we're imagining all this? Mr. Jeffords, I just don't know. Pull up your lantern. Yes. I don't know how it works, Mr. Wilkins, but somebody's forging those shipment papers. He probably figures that the agent will assume that his order's gone astray and put through another one. But they fill every order they get. Yeah. And the merchandise ends up on the shelves of every crooked merchant in San Francisco. Let's leave everything the way it is. I'll find Mr. Chenoweth. I know where he's having dinner. Look, Mr. Jeffords. I hope you understand. I have no connection with any... I'm going to put you up for a medal. What about locking the other door? Oh, I can do that from the outside. You go ahead.
Good evening, sir. Jollyman. What's on your mind? Jollyman, sir. I'm from Shanghai Kelly's. 20, 40, 60, uh, that's the one by the door, ain't it? 80, 90, 100 dollars. He'll be on the Orient Queen, outbound with the tide tonight. But said you only had one. Oh, we had a bigger evening than we expected. Ah. Yeah. He looks good. Been to sea like the others? Around the horn. Mm, good. I better get back to Kelly's. I only brought enough money for one. This is bargain night. You can have both of them for a hundred dollars. They're all yours. You don't say. That's gonna please Kelly very much. Thank you. Nothing at all. Night. Good night. That'll be all, thank you. How many men in the San Francisco office? 20 to 30. That's counting warehouse personnel, draymen, and so on. You say the requisitions from the agents all cross Wilkins' desk? That's right. He's the key man, then. All he'd need is a couple of crooked draymen and somebody to run the warehouse on Brandon Street. First thing we better do is to get him off that ship before she sails. We'll need him. Do you think so? Well, you will prefer charges, won't you, Mr. Chenoweth? Well, it's hardly the time with the Secretary of the Interior in town. Now, why don't we arrange that shipment for you? You can ride back with it and leave the rest to me. What do you call this? Discretion. Oh. Uh, how much are you drawing a year, Jeffords? 1,200? 1,400? Around that? Mm -hmm. Oh. I suppose a man could better himself if he kept his eyes open. Now, I was just about to suggest that. You see, I'd hate to embarrass the commissioner while the secretary was in town. You know, I think I might be able to arrange a raise and grade for you, Jeffords. Heaven knows you deserve it. You've done a magnificent job with the Chiricawas. Thanks. One fundamental thing we all must learn, however, is discretion, diplomacy. We must know how to preserve secrets, departmental secrets. I understand. You sure? I think so. I was wrong about Wilkins. You're the key man, and you're trying to buy me off. You dirty, double-dealing, money-hungry thief. I'll show you. Help! Help! Help, please! Tom. Tom, wake up. Tom? <clears throat> I've nearly gone out of my mind. Five days. It seems I'm late for that dinner. Why didn't you get word to me? I've been yelling my head off for a lawyer for five days and getting nowhere. What's happened? You mean you haven't heard about the deputy commissioner? I haven't heard anything but a sour baritone at the other end of the cell block. The papers are full of it. The deputy commissioner brought charges against half the office force here. It's a five-alarm scandal. How did it get to him? I don't know. If it wasn't in for the newspapers, I would never have known where you were. You mean I'm famous? No, but the pants are. The headline said, Chiricahuas get pants. Feeling as I do on the subject, I couldn't help uh, reading the story. Naturally. They're getting 20 gross. Went out this morning, a uh, horse freight. In spite of the fact it said that Chiricahua agent Jeffords was currently being held in the city jail on assault charges. Better go speak to the commissioner. Oh, first things first. You owe me a dinner. And I'm not going to leave your side until you pay up. Mr. Secretary, the minute I saw that, I knew something was terribly wrong. According to my recollection, we'd sent shipment after shipment of food and clothing to the Chiricahuas. I can't tell you how embarrassed I am. Oh, nonsense. You've already shown me that you know how to act when you're given the facts. I must confess, however, that I am astonished at your method in airing them. Mr. Commissioner, who is Emperor Norton? 